happy Tuesday to my wonderful reading intensive students. I hope that you have had a wonderful Monday and we're going to continue with the giver. So if you would please be so kind to open up your notes to chapter 19. We are going to be reading it today or I'll be reading it and telling you the notes that I would like for you to please write down. So please, if you would, I'm going to zoom in a little, begin reading along with me and taking some notes. Chapter 19. Jonas glanced at the clock. There was so much work to be done always that he and the giver seldom simply sat and talked the way they just had. I'm sorry that I wasted so much time with my questions, Jonas said. I was only asking about release because my father is releasing a new child today, a twin. He has to select one and release the other. They do it by weight, Jonas glanced at the clock. Actually, I suppose he's already finished. I think it was this morning. The giver's face took on a solemn look. I wish they wouldn't do that, he said quietly, almost to himself. Well, they can't have two identical people around. Think how confusing it would be, Jonas chuckled. I wish I could watch, he added with an, as an afterthought. He liked the thought of seeing his father perform the ceremony and making the little twin clean and comfy. His father was such a gentle man. You can watch, the giver said. No, Jonas told him. They never let children watch. It's very private. Jonas, the giver told him, I know that you read your training instructions very carefully. Don't you remember? that you're allowed to ask anyone anything? Jonas nodded, yes. But, Jonas, when you and I have finished our time together, you will be the new receiver. You can read the books, you'll have the memories, you have access to everything. It's part of your training. If you want to watch a release, you have simply to ask. So in your notes, you've written down, hopefully, chapter 19. Please write down that Jonas can watch a release if he wants. He just has to ask. Oh my, I guess I shouldn't lay that down there. He just has to ask. Okay, continuing. And of course, you can pause this at any time if you need to. Jonas shrugged. Well, maybe I will then, but it's too late for this one. I'm sure it was this morning. The giver told him then something he had not known. All private ceremonies are recorded. They're in the hall of closed records. Do you want to see this morning's release? Jonas hesitated. He was afraid that his father wouldn't like it if he watched something so private. I think you should, the giver told him firmly. All right then, Jonas said, tell me how. The giver rose from his chair, went to the speaker on the wall, and clicked the switch from off to on. The voice spoke immediately. Yes, receiver, how may I help you? I would like to give, or excuse me, I would like to see this morning's release of the twin. One moment, receiver. Thank you for your instructions. Jonas watched the video screen above the row of switches. Its blank face began to flicker with zigzag lines. Then some numbers appeared, followed by the date and time. He was astonished and delighted that this was available to him and surprised that he had not known. Suddenly, he could see a small windowless room, empty except for a bed, a table with some equipment on it. Jonas recognized a scale. He had seen them before when he'd been doing volunteer hours at the nurturing center and a cupboard. He could see pale carpeting on the floor. Okay, please put in your notes that the giver has requested today's release from the nurturing center for Jonas to see. So the giver, which everyone else calls the receiver still in the community if you notice, the giver has requested today's release from the nurturing center. It's just an ordinary room, he commented. I thought maybe they'd have it in the auditorium so that everybody could come. All the old go to the ceremonies of release, but I suppose that when it's just a newborn, they don't. Shh, 
the giver said, his eyes on the screen. Jonas's father, wearing his nurturing uniform, entered the room, cradling a tiny new child wrapped in a soft blanket in his arms. A uniformed woman followed through the door, carrying a second new child wrapped in a similar blanket. That's my father, Jonas found himself whispering, as if he might wake the little ones if he spoke aloud. And the other nurturer is his assistant. She's still in training, but she'll be finished soon. The two nurturers unwrapped the blankets and laid the identical newborns on the bed. They were naked. Jonas could see that they were males. He watched, fascinated, as his father gently lifted one and then the other to the scale and weighed them. He heard his father laugh. <laughs> Good, his father said to the woman. I thought for a moment that they might both be exactly the same. Then we'd have a problem. But this one, he handed one after rewrapping it to his assistant, is six pounds even. So you can clean him up and dress him and take him over to the center. The woman took the new child and left through the door she had entered. Jonas watched as his father bent over the squirming new child on the bed. And you little guy, you're only five pounds, 10 ounces, a shrimp. That's the special voice he uses with Gabriel. Jonas remarked, smiling. Watch, the giver said. Now he cleans him up and makes him comfy, Jonas told him. He told me. Be quiet, Jonas, the giver commanded in a strange voice. Watch. Obediently, Jonas concentrated on the screen, waiting for what would happen next. He was especially curious about the ceremony part. His father turned and opened the cupboard. He took out a syringe and a small bottle. Very carefully, he inserted the needle into the bottle and began to fill the syringe with the clear liquid. Jonas winced sympathetically. He had forgotten that new children had to get shots. He hated shots himself, though he knew that they were necessary. To his surprise, his father began very carefully to direct the needle into the top of the new child's forehead, puncturing the place where the fragile skin pulsed. The newborn squirmed and wailed faintly. Why is he, shh, the giver said sharply. His father was talking and Jonas realized that he was hearing the answer to the question he had started to ask. Still in the special voice, his father was saying, I know, I know it hurts, little guy, but I have to use a vein and the veins in your arms are still too teeny weeny. He pushed the plunger very slowly, injecting the liquid into the scalp vein until the syringe was empty. So please pause and in your notes put down that Jonas's father weighed both of the twins and he picked the twin that weighed five pounds and 10 ounces to be released. Jonas's father weighed the twins and he picked the twin that weighed the least, the one that weighed five pounds and 10 ounces. Also write down that he gave the smaller baby a shot or an injection in the soft spot on top of the baby's head. So you and I and all babies have a little soft spot on top of their head. And if you ever notice, you can see it kind of pulsating. That's where the bones have not completely joined, gives you room to grow. And that is where he directed the injection because he needed a vein. So put down that he put the shot or he injected the medicine into the baby's scalp. Okay, and we're going to continue. If you need still more time, of course, pause the video. All done. That wasn't so hard, was it? Jonas heard his father say cheerfully. He turned aside and dropped the syringe into a waste receptacle. Now he cleans him up and makes him comfy, Jonas said to himself, aware that the giver didn't want to talk during the little ceremony. As he continued to watch, the new child, no longer crying, 
moved his arms and legs in a jerking motion. Then he went limp. His head fell to the side, his eyes half open. Then he was still. With an odd, shocked feeling, Jonas recognized the gestures and posture and expression. They were familiar. He had seen them before, but he couldn't remember where. Jonas stared at the screen, waiting for something to happen, but nothing did. The little twin lay motionless. His father was putting things away, folding the blanket, closing the cupboard. Once again, as he had on the playing field, he felt the choking sensation. Once again, he saw the face of the light-haired, bloodied soldier as life left his eyes. The memory came to him. He killed it. My father killed it, Jonas said to himself, stunned at what he was realizing. He continued to stare at the screen numbly. What a horrible realization I want you to put in your notes. That as Jonas was watching the little baby, he realized that it had died. As Jonas was watching the little baby, he realized it had died. He had the memory of death from the memory of war, if you recall, which is such a terrible thing for this young man to have to realize. His father tidied the room, and then he picked up a small carton that lay waiting on the floor, set it on the bed, and lifted the limp body into it. He placed the lid on tightly. He picked up the carton and carried it to the other side of the room. He opened a small door in the wall. Jonas could see darkness behind the door. It seemed to be the same sort of chute into which trash was deposited at school. His father loaded the carton containing the body into the chute and gave it a shove. Bye bye, little guy, Jonas heard his father say before he left the room. Then the screen went blank. The giver turned to him. Quite calmly, he related, when the speaker notified me that Rosemary had applied for release, they turned on the tape to show me the process. There she was, my last glimpse of that beautiful child waiting. They brought in the syringe and asked her to roll up her sleeve. You suggested, Jonas, that perhaps she wasn't brave enough. I don't know about bravery, what it is, what it means. I do know that I sat here numb with horror, wretched with helplessness. And I listened as Rosemary told them that she would prefer to inject herself. Then she did so. I didn't watch, I looked away. The giver turned to him. Well, there you are, Jonas. You were wondering about release, he said in a bitter voice. Jonas felt a ripping sensation inside himself, the feeling of terrible pain clawing its way forward to emerge in a cry. So in your notes, please write down, Jonas realizes what release means now. Jonas realizes what release means now. People do not go elsewhere to a better life. Instead, life is taken from them and they are discarded. What a horrible, horrible thing for him to realize that his father, who he loves very much, because he can feel emotions, unlike everyone else in the community, his father, who he loved so much, could be part of this terrible practice. That little child, much like you did the report, China, that one child rule. Thankfully, that is no more. But can you imagine how sad and hurtful that is? So though this is fantasy, 
and it is what we call science fiction because it takes place in the future that has not yet come. And we call it a dystopia because it's like a perfect society from the outside. But then as you go deeper into this culture, you realize it's not quite so perfect. Okay, we're going to pause there for a moment. Okay, so I did want to point out to you that this is still a community that he lives in that lives by strict rules. So we know that he has his own set of rules that he was given once he became a receiver. However, they had rules before that that the community follows. Things like a pilot could never fly over the community. And they didn't think that was odd because they never lived in a way that that was a strange thing. They had to share their feelings after evening meal. Only two children per family and one was male and one was female. People are released after three mistakes. Boy, that's pretty unforgiving, isn't it? Um, 50 children are born each year, so every group has 50 in it. You're not allowed to brag. You can't say how wonderful you are. <laughs> uh, I guess there wouldn't be Snapchat and Instagram and all of these uh, YouTube influencers in that society because you're not allowed to brag. Don't look at another's nakedness. Well, you know, anyway, we won't touch that one. Stirrings must be reported in order that they get treatment for it. Okay, remember he stopped taking those pills, so his emotions are coming out more now. Children cannot see a release. Well, unless you're the receiver, and he did see it, and you have to use, you must use precise language. You can't speak vaguely or incorrectly. Language must be very precise. Once he became the receiver, these were his rules. After school, go straight to the annex room. Go straight home after training each day. He's exempt from rudeness rules, so he can, you know, basically discuss anything he wants and ask anything. Do not, though, discuss your training with anyone. So he can't tell people about colors and all the things that he's going to find out about. From this moment, you're prohibited from dream telling. So he cannot tell his family about his dreams. Except for illness or injury, unrelated to training, do not apply for medicine. Okay, so maybe he gets sick, cold, which is very unlikely, or a flu. Uh, or some kind of injury, like when he hurt his finger. But if it's related to your training, yes, you can have medicine. If, I mean, excuse me, if it's not related to your training, yes, you can have medicine. If it's something like you have a sore from being burnt from the sun, well, that can't be treated with medicine. And he cannot apply for release and he can lie, which is a scary concept for him. He's never had to lie. Um, as you can imagine, today, chapter 19 was certainly a very upsetting one for all of us because no one wants to think of beautiful babies who just had a few ounces difference between them and one could live and one couldn't because they had the belief that you couldn't have two people identical in their community and yet they were all about sameness and they kept saying that you know sameness was the thing we should have same skin color same eye color same hair color now this is the giver and this is uh his father with the little baby and here's some twins the syringe so what i want you to do I want you to be sure that if you haven't done it, I need chapters 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 handwritten from the notes I gave and emailed to me. And today I need the notes to chapter 19, also handwritten, also emailed to this email address, okay? Hang in there. Thank you for being such a lovely class. Know that you are missed and you are valued. And I look forward to the day that we get to see each other again, face to face. Have a great day and continue to be a blessing. Bye.